Hey guys, welcome to our tiny house. Today we're going to be talking about the Lunos E2 heat recovery ventilation system. So firstly, why would you want to install a heat recovery ventilation system in your tiny house, or for that means in any, in any home? But back in the day, housing in New Zealand tended to be native timbers, had big air gaps, um, you get draft um, coming up through the house and the air escaping. Um, so that meant that any moisture introduced, i.e. through showering, living, cooking, was expelled through these big gaps. The, th the problem with this is that uh, you're also losing all your heat straight through the big gaps. And that back in the day it didn't matter so much, you had a massive fireplace, crank it up, she'll be sweet. So now the trend is um, in New Zealand homes and around the world is that the home building envelopes are getting tighter and tighter. So that means this moisture hit now has nowhere to go or very little place to go. And so it condensates in your room, you end up with higher humidity, mould issues, and not such a pleasant place to be living in um, if it's not dealt with. So that brings us on to mechanical heat recovery ventilation systems. Now they come in different uh, shapes and sizes and forms. But basically they're bringing fresh air into the home and expelling stale air out. And say you're on a cold night, they're actually bringing in the cold air and then they've got a heat exchanger in them of some description and it warms that air, that cold air coming in and warms it um, to, the t to the temperature that, they that the air is going out at or pretty close to it. Now tiny homes exacerbate this issue even more because they're tiny. So if you've got a couple, of pe a few people living in your tiny house, just being in here you're giving off a lot of moisture. Um, we've been living in ours a number of years and if we've got, before we had the system, if we had three, yeah, three people in here um, having dinner, say, everything would condensate up, you could feel the air was decreasing, um, it wasn't that pleasant. And I know you can say, yep, We'll just open the window but when it's like minus in nature it can be like minus two it can be worse down south you haven't always got that option just to open a window uh, also for us we've got heaps of mosquitoes so if we open a window and we've got a light on at night it, you, you don't want to be in here um, so that's really where the system comes into play and after we installed this a year ago and after living it with it for a year as a bit of a test to see how it would go i highly recommend everyone to install one of these. So there's different systems on the market but the Lunos E2 seems to fit very well with the tiny house living uh, just because it's a uh, small compact uh, size and sort of deals with these smaller air volumes really well. So there are, it's a German made system. One's bringing fresh air in for a minute and then this one here will be expelling uh, the air in that same minute and then they actually switch over. So in there there's basically a motor that spins away uh, in a tube. So this tube can be drilled into your wall and it can either be retrofitted or done when you're building your house. And then on the outside um, you can buy the Lunos grills or you can make your own as we've done out here. So our walls are about 140 mil thick, so we've made this um, sort of standout plate to sit them on. Um, so that's something to bear in mind, there is an actual amount of thickness that you do need to your walls to install them. Or you can have them poking outside, inside, or both. So the unit's actually got a flap, so you can close them up and shut them down. So in terms of energy used over a year, I've been told that it's a cent a day, so $36 a year to run them. So they use very little energy. Yeah, they do make a little bit of noise. At night you can hear them, but you do get used to it pretty quickly. They sort of make that start up whirling sort of noise for their minute cycle and then slow down and whirl up again. So yeah, the wires, these ethernet cables run from each unit back to the controller and then the controller to a 12 volt power supply. So being 12 volt, if you're capable, uh, anyone can install it. 
but obviously the final hookup to uh, mains voltage 240 volts needs to be done by a professional. To be honest, I've turned this thing on, I played around with it a bit, I looked at the instruction manual, it didn't make much sense at all to me, it was quite complicated. I even find that controller is a little bit complicated, as you can see there's buttons and all sorts of stuff all over it. I've pretty much got it on what I understand to be an automatic setting. So once the humidity um, gets up to a certain point, it seems to go on turbo mode and suck, try to suck. They both go into suck mode, both the units, and suck as much of that humidity out as possible till they bring it back down and it normalizes back to a, a low fan speed. So we've just got this simple um, temperature and humidity uh, meter. As you can see, it's nice and warm in here at the moment with the house locked up in the, in the sun and that humidity sitting quite nicely. So I just, just gauge that every now and again. That's just a little battery powered unit. It cost about a dollar on eBay. So you can see we've taped off the LED lights, which indicate fan speed, etc. And they do glow white at night, which isn't ideal sleeping with a white light. So we've taped them up, but um, thinking about where you're gonna position that controller so you've got reasonably easy access to it, where it looks good and those lights aren't shining at you um, is important. So fitting the controller into joinery was uh, pretty straightforward for us. And you can see those ethernet cables uh, diving back into the wall there. So we did retrofit our one and it was a pretty straightforward process to be honest. Um, like anything though it would be nicer to have designed it um, with the house initially. So you can also get a Lunos extraction fan for your bathroom. Also, we've decided just to go with uh, the standard extraction fan. It's a pretty cheap one. It doesn't work amazingly well. If I was to do it again, yep, I'd probably spend the extra and get the Lunos, just knowing the quality um, and the quietness of these units. So when you're looking to buy one of these units, uh, it is all broken down into a, quite a few different parts. So there's the unit, there's the transformer, there's the PVC tubes, uh, there's the grills, and a few other bits and pieces. Um, and this will be all broken down for you. We chose to uh, mitigate a, a couple of those things just to save a bit of cost and just to suit our build, uh, i.e. the vent on the outside of the house. Um, so you can save a little bit of money. bought this unit from the heating company who are very knowledgeable about the product and could answer all of our technical questions, no problems. So the Lunos E2 unit in the video has since been replaced by the E2 Neo. Upgrades to this unit is uh, higher airflow, can work in higher wind zones. It's got the same decibel rating as the previous unit. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. We've had a lot of questions uh, about our unit, so I hope this, this answers some of those questions. But if you do have any other questions, feel free to comment below or flick over to our website for some more info. Uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.